Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience. And so I want to apologize. I was having some issues with my mic, and I'm not sure um, if they were all corrected or not. And so I'm going to need you guys to help me with some feedback and let me know if you all can hear me and then also if you'll be able to hear our guest today. And if for whatever reason you can't hear me or the guests, what we're going to do is send you a Zoom link because we do not want to miss what's going on today, okay? We're going to make this happen. This is happening. This is going to happen, and it's happening tonight, <laughs> all right? And so I'm super excited about our guests. Oh, great. I'm glad that you can hear me. So we're going to make sure. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop our guests on just to say hello really quick, to make sure that you can hear him. And if you can hear him, we'll we'll go on and um, make sure that everything is is great. And then I'll do the proper introduction later. So we're just going to do this a little bit. So Zach, can you say hi to everyone? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Um, I don't know. We've been having some technical difficulties. I don't know if anybody could hear. If they could chime in and let me know if they can hear me out there. So if you guys can text in for me, me, I see that you're on. Yes, you can hear Zach. Say yes, I can hear Zach. They can hear me. Just so I'm, I can't hear him for some reason on my computer. So I just want to make sure you guys can hear him. And if, yes, we are on. <laughs> Great. Okay. So Zach, I'm going to bring you back on. I want to make sure that I do a proper introduction of you. Okay. So we are here today and I'm so excited and that's what was taking so long because I couldn't hear him. And I'm like, I don't know if everybody else is going to be able to hear him or if it was just my system. And apparently it's my system, you know, but that's OK. <laughs> so we're going to get the word out there tonight. So we are live in the secret circle. I'm so excited about this. So today, have you ever thought about doing a pitch? But maybe you say, you know what? I don't have a lot of experience. Are you a new speaker? Or maybe you're an experienced speaker and you would love, like on your checklist of things to do, I want to do a TED talk, a TEDx. That is one of my goals. Is that one of your goals? Maybe you not, haven't thought about it, but now you're starting to think, hmm, that would be a great way to leverage my brand. Well, I'm glad that you're joining in today. Okay, because that's what we're talking about. This session here is for you. So don't stop. In fact, won't you share this to some of your friends and say, look, I need you to stop on in here because you have a message to share. Your voice needs to be heard. In fact, you need to be on TEDx, right? You need to be on the TED stage. Let's unlock the talk. You ready to unlock the talk? Somebody say, unlock the talk with me. I like to talk, but today I want to unlock the talk with TED Talks, all right? Yes, and so what are we going to do today? We are going to talk to Zach Billing Billinger, and why? Because he has already unlocked the talk, y'all. Because he has unlocked the talk, he's going to tell us what we can do. Even if you feel like I have no experience, even if you feel like I don't know if I'm ready for that. He is going to share with you and learn how you can take advantage and get the opportunity to speak at a TEDx conference. He's going to tell you how to prepare for your TEDx talk and how you can even mark your talk, right? Because once you get there, you want people to what? View your talk. So if y'all are ready to unlock y'all talk, say unlock the talk, unlock the talk, unlock the talk. Okay, I'm hype about it because I'm really excited for our guest today. But I need to tell y'all a little bit about who we gonna hear from. Okay, so Zach Billinger is a motivational speaker. Not only has he unlocked the talk, but he is an author. He's a career consultant. He speaks on topics including career development, job interviews, passion and purpose, and overcoming obstacles leaderships, and guess what? Even sales. That's why he can tell you how to unlock the talk, right? Okay, so for 14 years, he has helped high schools, colleges, nonprofit organizations, corporations, and companies 
reach their true potential and discover their purpose and passion. Ooh, that sounds good. I think that's what you should be talking about at your next TED Talk. What you think? Mm, that sounds like an idea to me. Unlock the talk. Y'all gonna be singing that. Unlock the talk. All right. He has been featured regularly at the U University of Tennessee. He's also been featured by the Huffington Puff, NBC, CBS. He got all the letters in the alphabet. Hey. He's been everywhere. Now he's in the speaker circle. We are so lucky to have him. Tri City Times, Morgan um, County News, Jane Jackson Careers, and just so much more, guys. I could go on and on and on. He is a dynamic speaker. That's why he was on TED Talks already, right? He can relate. If he can relate to high school students, let's just play. Let's just take a moment. Thank you, Zach. Whew, not everybody can do that, but Zach can. All right. And so he brings his passion. He brings who he is to the stage. And today, what is he bringing to you? He is going to bring you the necessary things you need to do to unlock the talk. And so as he is going about doing a presentation, if you have questions, make sure that you list them in the comments so that at the end, I will be able to ask him what you are speaking. He has not addressed that. Is that all right? All right. I think it's time to welcome Zach. Everybody, you know, we can't like step up and hear it, but what we can do is share some hearts, some thumbs up. That's how we spread the love. So, Zach, welcome, and the stage is yours. All right. Thank you, Lanise. Thank you for the passion and energy that you're bringing. Guys, thank you so much for joining tonight. This won't be that painful. I won't keep you that long, but uh, Lanise did mention that I was able to give two TED Talks. So I gave one at the Oracle Center in Redwood City, California, and then I gave one in Boston, and I had two completely different experiences. So I want to help you guys deliver the best TED Talk how to brand it. So we're going to go through some learning objectives, what we're doing tonight. There's three things that I want you to take away is number one is you're going to learn how to gain exposure by presenting at TEDx or TED. In other words, we don't stop when we present TED and say that's an opportunity. We're going to learn how to brand ourselves. And then how to apply to a TEDx talk. There's a lot of myths, a lot of common rumors out there. I want to walk through you how you can find a TEDx talk. And it's not impossible at all. It's in fact very simple. And I know you can do it. And the last thing is, you know, when you get your TED talk done, how do you brand it? How do you market it? I think that's what a lot of speakers really struggle with. And so I'm going to give you some tips on what I'm doing and share with you some personal experience, um, what I'm doing in that uh, in that role. So we'll begin. I've got a little some notes here and then we'll go right to um, what is TED and everything about that. So TED was started in 1984. It began as a global movement. And the good news is for you guys, it's kind of morphed into more of a community environment. So the TEDx talks are a little bit easier to get into. Now, why is that? So since 2009, there's been about 50,000 TED talks given around the world. And if you go to TED.com, you could notice that there's plenty of TEDx events that are going around all over the United States, probably in your own backyard. So that's really how TED's morphed. It's given more people in the community the opportunity. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Simon Sinek. He's probably one of the most famous TED Talks um, out there on branding and the reason behind the why. And that was actually a TEDx talk that he gave live. So the community TED Talks are a great way to get exposure for local audiences. 
Um, TED is a nonprofit organization. It's designed to spread ideas. It's that simple. I know it stands for technology, education, and design, but it's basically morphed into any idea that you have or anything that you can think of that would be a technology breakthrough for the marketplace. Any great idea. It's morphed into any topic on how to help somebody. So if you look at it through that lens, um, you can really do it. And what I would say is, is take the subject matter that you're an expert in. So for example, I'm really passionate about the career development side. So I knew that my TED talk was going to be designed based on something I knew about. I didn't want to do a theme that I didn't know about or that I wasn't really an expert on. So that's how I try to chose my theme. And so that's a little bit about TED and all the intro stuff as well. Now, what you guys want to do before you actually give a TED talk, because what happens is these local planners, there's usually about three or four, and they're usually students because it's a community organized event. And a lot of these high schools or colleges or nonprofit organizations, they'll put on TED and there'll be about three people on that committee. And what you want to do is you want to have some type of a speaker profile. So when they were vetting my credentials, they, of course, Googled my name, which a lot of employers do. So they Googled my name and guess what popped up? There was three speaking um, bureaus that I was a part of and you can join for free. And I suggest you doing this. My favorite one is speaker match. You can create a free profile and really make it a professional profile. Have your picture up there. Put on what you specialize, maybe some videos that you have of you giving a presentation so they can see your speaking style. So the bash is the second one, B-A-S-H, the bash. Um, Gig Salad is another good one. So I would take those free speaker bureaus, create your profile and put all your information there, what you're an expert in, what you do, how you differentiate yourself. That'll make it really easy for the organizers when they Google you or they go to your page, they'll see all your speaking information. And really, you want to have an idea. And this is a no time to wing it to be honest. You know, I've been speaking for many years. I know probably you, some of you are just getting started or you're wanting to make it a career. So you have speaking experience, but I think it's so important. I, I tend to wing talks a lot, to be honest with you, especially ones that I've given a hundred and 200, 300 times, you know, it's typical for me just to break through, but TED Talk is a completely different experience. You really want to practice it out and we'll go through that more um, in detail. So how do we apply? That's the big question. How do I get um, a TED Talk? So all you do is really go to TED.com. You search in your area. That's what I would start. So I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So the one of the things I would do if I were you, I would start in my market and see what kind of TED Talk opportunities are going on this year. So I would keep that list available, click on those links, and you can apply a lot of the times right there if they don't have their speakers. Now, each one of these community TEDx events will have their own theme. And typically the themes vary, but you can easily weave that theme into your talk and you don't even have to, but you know, my Ted talk was on purpose and passion. Uh, life is short, find your passion. You can really tie that into many, many different themes as a conference. So don't let the theme steer you away, but I would mold that theme into your talk. So, you know, that's how I would pick a TEDx community event. Um, usually, like I said before, there's three or four people on the bureau. They decide you submit your application in there. Thank you. That's that's great. You've got the slides right there. So you submit your your application right into to online and they'll typically reach out to you. Uh, they'd like to do an audition. So you kind of want to have an outline of what your TED talk is. And I really recommend this. This sounds so elementary, but I recommend this for every job interview candidate to make sure you practice this TED Talk, guys. That is the biggest thing. You don't want anything over 18 minutes. You know, the rule is 18 minutes. I know some of you probably have seen TED Talks go over that, but typically your guys, your attention span is really in that first seven to eight seconds. 
And my TED talk was about 12 minutes, so it was very effective for me. So I would really hone in on that middle ground and practice what you want to do in that talk. The key to having a great talk is your intro. And I can't say that enough. So when you practice your intro, and you guys know this from speaking, but let me give you an example. So I go to a college or a high school. I don't start out by saying, you know, thank you, Lenise, so much for giving me this great opportunity to be here. I'm so glad to be be here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm excited to present to you guys. I know you're, you know, you lose the audience really quick with that. You've got to have a really engaging opener at TED Talks and really keep in mind, seven to eight seconds, how can you grab your audience's attention? The way I did it was, is I practiced three different scenario intros. And when I got picked, so I, you know, I told them my outline, I practiced it, but I asked the people on the board, I said, help me with my intro because I want my intro to be the best. So I had three different creative intros and I wound up, this was the first sentence I said at my TED talk. And I encourage you to go listen to it because it'll give you a kind of an idea. But when I walked out on stage, the first thing I said was, I believe in zombies. And people started laughing and I, you know, there's always risk and rewards to different things. But when I said, I believe in zombies, I got the reaction out of the audience exactly what I wanted. They were like, what is this guy talking about? He's kind of crazy. You know, he's on this life is short, find your passion. And he's just, he's a serious person who just said he believes in zombies. What the heck? So Something creative that'll make you stand out among your competition and be able to gain that quick something where people want to continue to watch the video is obviously the key. And so um, if you guys are still on the slide, I'm on the slide of before you apply slide on number three. So what are the rules of TED Talks? You know, there's a lot of things out there. You know, some talks don't always make it to TED.com. And what talks are those? You're not allowed to promote anything from the stage. And I've seen people do it and their talk doesn't get uploaded to TED Talks. So if you think you're going to get on there and be like, okay, you need to buy my new skin cream for only $19.99 at ZachBallinger.com, they'll most likely, you can't, you can't do that. And really those talks aren't designed for you to to have a commercial or anything. Um, there's no political agendas either. So if you start talking about, you know, the Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, that tends to get filtered out too. So I would kind of shy away from that kind of stuff. Um, if any advertisement of products and remember this guys, and a lot of people don't know this. You can use slides during a Ted talk. Um, some people choose not to use them. I like to use them because I think nowadays people are so visual. Now, a good story or teller can keep everybody's attention, but I'm not always a great storyteller. So I like to have images and pictures and I wouldn't have a lot of writing on my slides. I just had a simple image of what I wanted to talk about. So, for example, one of the things in there I said, you know, I think when people think of finding your purpose and your passion, that means go quit your day job and try to become an NBA basketball player. And I talked a little bit about my journey, how I had that dream growing up. But if you looked at a picture of me, I was actually 200 pounds, six foot, and I could barely jump two inches. But I wanted to guard Shaquille O'Neal in the paint for my job. And that just simply wasn't a realistic goal. That wasn't my passion. That wasn't my purpose. That wasn't my talent. But I showed that image of me at 14 and it got a laugh from the audience. So images can be really powerful. One of the things I advise you guys to do is really put together a PowerPoint, keep it short, but have pictures up there to show the audiences. If you use clip art, you lose use any images off the web, make sure to have your board look at your slide deck and see what's approved and what's not. Because you, the last thing you want to do is use an image that's not approved or copywritten, and then you can't use it for your talk, and then somehow it doesn't get uploaded to the site. That's the last thing that, that we want to have you do. And then listen to your own talk. Have other people listen to it. You know, you don't want to share your TED talk on like Facebook 
uh, you know, live or anything like that. But I would get some of your closest friends or a grab Lanise or grab me. Uh, you know, I've always loved to help new speakers. So if you get an opportunity, please follow me on my social media. And we'll go into that a little bit later. How you can follow me, run it by me. I'll give you some constructive feedback. Don't be afraid to hear constructive feedback. I know I did in my first TED Talk. I wanted to talk to people that had listened to a lot of TED Talks to see if it was something that resonated and that was interesting to my audience. So if you go to the next slide, we're going to talk about Brandon. So when you apply and you get your TED Talk, I wanted to mention this. You really want to set yourself up with a budget. And what do I mean by that? So let's say I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. And I find there's no TED Talks available for me to speak at in Atlanta, Georgia or Georgia or Tennessee or anywhere I can drive. Set a budget for yourself. So Ted Pro, TED's a nonprofit organization. You can end up spending a lot of money doing this, but I really recommend you having a budget. And I was able to, to save up and go to California and speak in, in Redwood City at the Oracle Center. But, you know, that was months ahead of time. And I knew I could afford that and I could take a vacation day on a Saturday, go out there and spend some time uh, and pay for my flight in the hotel. But some of you, you know, you might not be in that position right now, especially with, you know, coronavirus going on, too, may be challenging uh, to get to certain places of the country. But what I would encourage you to do is uh, apply for different ones that you can make it to in, in the drivable radius and set a budget for yourself. So let's move on to branding. When you apply, because I know all of you are going to get the opportunity to do a TEDx talk. I can feel it. I can feel the excitement from Lanise, and and I know this group's going to do it. So let's talk about branding. And I'll talk about myself for a minute because I think it'll make more sense. So your TED talk, when you, a lot of people think one of the myths is when I give a TEDx talk, I'm going to go viral. The, honestly, the chances of you going viral are like the same as you trying to get into the music industry. So really the power of TED is how you brand that talk for more things in your career. So what do I mean? So one of my, you know, find your life is short, find your purpose and passion. Mine is all about career discovery, finding a career you love. 70% of Americans don't like the job they're doing, according to Gallup poll. So we know seven out of 10 Americans hate their jobs. So I gave a talk that I plan to use for future things in talks, in branding and presentations. So what do I mean? Well, my target market for a t my TED Talk would probably be, if you looked at it, if you're finding your purpose and your passion, that would really help high school seniors. It would help college students, or it would help the 30 and 40 year olds that really didn't like their job and they hated it. So you look at your target market and you decide which social media platform am I going to invest my time in? How can I tell the story and get my TED Talks more clicks? And the way you do that is, is you use your social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok. There's so many of them out there. But let's look at my target market. And this is how I made many mistakes in the past. So think about this. A few years ago, I just used Facebook. Um, Facebook was my favorite tool. I have the most followers on there. I have 39,000 followers on my Facebook page. So I really only use Facebook. And I was talking to my brother and he was in college at the time. He was a freshman. And I said, hey, could you get some of your friends to follow my link on Facebook? I know you have a lot of high schools. He's like, well, Zach, honestly, a lot of people don't have Facebook that are my friends. And I found that interesting. And then I got to thinking about it. That's the wrong target for my market. If I'm going to go after somebody his age, it would be that Instagram, that Snapchat. Now it's TikTok. So you really have to be able to identify that target market. Now, my 30 and 40 year olds, 50 year olds that are struggling in a job that they don't like, then I can use more of that LinkedIn or Facebook approach. But could you imagine as a high school senior, if that was my target market, me branding my TED talk to high school seniors on LinkedIn, most of them don't have that kind of platform. So pick your platform that you want to do. 
podcasts. When you guys get your TED Talks, or let's say you want to do, you know, do it now because you want to get the idea out there. That's what I'm doing. I'm going on a bunch of different podcasts. I actually don't have my own podcast. I like going on other people's podcasts. So a great way to do that. And how do you find it? There's a website out there called Crowd questions. That's C-R-O-W-D question.com. Crowdquestion.com. You can fill out your profile. It's free. And what it does is it links you up with people that is in your theme. So let's say one of your speaking themes is leadership. It gives you suggestions on people that are looking for guests on leadership. You get on there, you tell them your idea, you give them a snippet, you give them that audience platform, and then they're ready. When you launch your TED Talk, they'll be ready to view it. So really, I think podcasts are a great way to brand your own talk. Email us. This is big, guys. So a lot of times to get on a podcast and not through not through a crowd question a lot of times, but a lot of times the more popular podcasts and obviously, you know, you want to seek to get more of the people that are subscribed to the podcast because that means more clicks for your your TED Talk link. But when you're vetting out and you're looking at a lot of them will ask, how many social media follows do you have? How many people do you have on each social media? And sometimes they'll ask, do you have a contact list? And what that means is email contacts. So when you guys are speaking out there, let's say you guys are start getting out there speaking and you're speaking before a group or you're speaking virtually. What I like to do is a giveaway. And I tell the event planner beforehand, I'm going to give a giveaway for the people that follow my social media and the people that write down their name. And I and I have somebody cut it in strips and then I draw it out and I have all their email contacts and I keep them. And then every week they get an update from me on my content. And so you don't want to bombard them every day with an email, but it keeps you fresh in their mind. And guess what? These people that have been successful motivational speakers, they've got a web, they've got a contact list emails of like 10,000 emails. So you're saying, well, let's say just 1,000 people actually use that platform. You probably got 1,000 people that are ready to view your TED Talk right then. And the key for things like YouTube and TED, the more views quicker, the higher it's going to get pushed up. And that's really the key. So if um, you go to the next slide on branding part two, what you can do to, to brand your TED Talk, a lot of people recommend this when you give your TED Talk or you have a theme in mind, you have a signature on your email. So every time you correspond with a customer, every time you correspond with a friend, a family member, that link is on there that's promoting your TED Talk. And so they can just be able to do it right then. One of the things that worked really well for me in gaining Facebook followers, because, you know, again, I tell you this because I want to really ingrain this into you. Once you give a TED Talk, that doesn't mean you go viral. You use the TED Talk for your branding and your business and your speaking. So one of the ways I utilized my TED Talk was to grow my followers on Facebook. So right now I have about 39,000 followers on Facebook page, but I used my TED Talk promo videos, a 30 second video of the best of the best. And you can do this in, in apps on your phone. Um, there's technology out there free. I think iMovie is the one of them. And you can piece together a 30 second video because remember what I told you, seven to eight seconds you've got of intention. Think about it when you scroll through your own social media. What gets your attention? How can you click on a video? I guarantee you, you only listen to a video a few seconds before you move on to the next content. So you've got to be able to, to grab their attention. So I really recommend you doing some type of a promo video before that. And then have a vision of your TED Talk. This is where I had the vision of my TED Talk. You know, life is short. Discover your passion. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I'm wearing a shirt. It says zombie on it, and it's got a definition of a zombie. And then at the bottom of it, it has hashtag Zach Ballinger. And so this was a great way because remember what I said at the beginning of my talk, I believe in zombies. So I made a t-shirt 
and I had a t-shirt maker make these. These are some of my giveaways. It's marketing for my brand, which is me and my talks. People think the shirts are pretty cool. I wear them around. If they see it, I give them a business card. And so I had this great vision for this TED Talk that this was going to keep me doing something more. So right now I have over 1,700 views on my TED Talk. And my next plan is, as you can see, by books and materials, I'm getting ready to launch a brand new book. I've already written one book, The Hot Seat, How to Meet the Challenge of a New Era in Job Interviewing. I'm getting ready to launch a second book this fall, and I'm really excited because I've learned a lot from the first launch to really help me to the second launch. And I've used the TED Talk platform to really launch my idea and my little concept into a big concept, which is a book. And that book's going to be called Don't Be a Zombie, Find a Career You Love. So I've really utilized everything fr from this TED Talk. Now, a couple of things before I open it up to questions. Um, so when you think about a TED Talk, I'll give you an example of what not to do. So remember, I gave one, I told you I gave one in uh, San Francisco area and I gave one in Boston. And unfortunately, when I gave one in Boston, I didn't realize the planners were young and you really can't do anything about this. But the planners had very poor audio quality for the talk. And, you know, if, if you go and, and go to ZachBallinger.com and you can find all my links or go to Zach, YouTube Zach Ballinger and you'll find two TED Talks and you'll find them extremely different. The one at Oracle, I feel like I nailed it. I would only take a couple of things back, you know, as speakers were probably our harshest critics. So I would probably take a thing, few things back from there. But Boston, I would have completely done it over. And sometimes you're going to get planners that um, don't know how to work audio, that aren't as um, technology savvy. And you can it can really hurt the quality of that that talk. So you really want to talk to the organizers about, you know, how the production quality is going to be, you know, and you can tell extreme difference because it really did affect the views. Another thing that I did wrong in Boston, I love to admit to being wrong because I make a lot of mistakes. You know, I said not to wing it, but I felt very confident and that the talk was completely different. It was about being a bully. And it was talking about the crisis that we have in America when it comes to bullying in high schools and how teenage suicide is one of the number one killers in the United States. And um, I had a great content. I had a lot of statistics. But, you know, there's a teleprompter so you can match a teleprompter to your slides to help you remember. And I relied on that way too much. And guess what? They were ahead of the teleprompter and my content didn't align with the slides. So if you watch the TED Talk from Boston, you can kind of tell that I'm a little behind because I, I'm used to that content. So what I'm trying to say is don't rely on your slides. That's why you want to practice, have everything memorized, ready to go and, and make sure you're, you're ready. And another thing, too, is I think um, for for Boston, what I would have done differently, too, is practice and make it about images. And, you know, I really relied on a lot on statistics to really guide me, but I would use more of a storytelling approach and that's how you really in, engage your audience. So, um, I hope that helped. Um, I know I don't like to talk too long, but I want to open it up for, for questions. And, um, I can't see in the ch chat right now, but I'll have Lanice, let me know if there's any questions you guys have for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I did miss one slide. Lanice, if you'll go back, I'm sorry. Let me finish up here because I want to go to the miss. If you'll go back up one slide, I'll go to the miss, the common myths. So, um, TED Talk myths, this is important. And I've already talked about, you know, going viral, but a lot of people think if I give a TED Talk, it'll increase my speaking business. That's simply not true. Why? Because, you know, when I was before COVID-19, I was really busy with my speaking abilities and nobody ever said, oh my gosh, let me hear your TEDx event. Event planners were looking more for 
a video of my experience. So the reason I tell you this is don't wait two years before you start into the speaking business on a TED X opportunity. Go ahead and practice now speaking, build your business. It's really not going to impact your business that much as far as booking more gigs. It's simply not. TEDx is an event for you to use to brand yourself like I talked about earlier. So um, don't think that okay, I'm going to give a TEDx talk. Now I'm going to be, you know, a top 10 speaker in the United States. It's just not how it happens because event planners ask you what your theme is, what your experience is. Do you have a promotional video that aligns with that theme that you're going to use? Like I said, I've given a lot of talks, thousands and thousands, and nobody said, can I see your TED talk? So um, they they notice it and, you know, it's a great thing to advertise. And I think it brings a lot of attention because a lot of people in America like TED Talks, but it won't really increase your bottom line as far as growing your speaking business. Um, I only need a TED Talk to to the mark to market my speaking business. That's not true. You can market your speaking business right now today. I gave you some ideas about target markets, social media, different giveaways, things like that. And then also, um, I'll, I get this thing a lot since I don't make any money speaking at TEDx event won't help me. And that's not true either because you can use your TED on, TEDx talk to brand your own self and then build your brand off of that kind of like what I'm doing with my overall vision uh, of where I want to be with the, with the don't be a zombie talk. So last slide, this is where you can follow me. I encourage you to go to zapballinger.com, go to YouTube, like my video, comment on it. And that's the biggest way to get YouTube up. I, I'm sure you guys know this, but the more likes you get on YouTube, the higher it raises it. So if you get your friends and your family, when you guys give that TEDx talk, reach out to me. I'll like your YouTube. I'll comment on it. The more comments, once you get a comment, make sure you comment back because the whole world can see that. They're interacting with it. It's kind of like that algorithm on LinkedIn. The more people comment on stuff and the more people you comment on it, the more you're going to pop up in their feed and the more likes you'll get. So those are really some of the TED Talk myths that I wanted to go through. And and any questions, Lanise, I'm going to turn it over to you. I can't really see the, the questions that have come in if I've had any, but um, I'll open it up to you to facilitate that if you don't mind. Yes. Um, can you hear me all right? I can. Let's see. Yes. Um, can you hear me all right? I can. Okay, we did have one question. Um, actually, I have a question too, but there's a question here. So okay, the, we did have one question. And sorry, I'm getting feedback. Let me mute my um my phone here. Sorry about that. No problem. So this is a great example of what he was talking about with the technical stuff. <laughs> I am the technical person. <laughs> Not okay. So you had mentioned earlier about um some bureaus that people should subscribe to. Could you? Someone did not get a chance to write those down. Could you share those again? What what were the, what was the question again? Bureaus. Oh sure, yeah. So um, and I'll type them in the comments to, to for them to help. So the number one, I like the Bash a lot. It used to be called Gig Masters. The Bash. It's T H E B A S H, and you can put a free profile online, and that you, it'll match you up with events that people like in your in your area so you can put the mileages that you're willing to travel and then everything and you can build your brand and there's speaker match i really like that because you can apply to different opportunities again it's free um, you can build your profile there and the more of these you guys have when they google your name guess what 
these are going to pop up in the search things. So it's really cool when you Google my name, you'll see the different bureaus that I'm a part of. You'll probably see the TED Talk that, that immediately pops up when you Google my name. And so you keep doing these things, the more your name spreads and everything. So the second one's called Speaker Match. And the other one where you can build a free profile on is Gig Salad, G-I-G-S-A-L-A-D, Gig Salad. Okay. And so again, the um, feedback is, is slower on the phone than it is here. So, but we're making this work today. There's another question that just came in. Um, a viewer wants to know, there's a TV interview online. How did you land that? That's a good question. So, you know, um, there's a many ways you can do it. But the really the best way, and, and you got to get comfortable doing this, is showing up at the news station. And that is the easiest way because a lot of times they're not going to answer you via email if they don't know who you are. LinkedIn is another good way. I don't know if you have a LinkedIn page, but really you can go. What's really cool about news stations is, so let's say I live in Atlanta, Georgia. And I wanted to go on the news to share something, an idea or an experience. I'll go to that news page site and everybody's email is public knowledge. So anchors, journalists, content producers, all that's public information. Their emails are on that page, the producer. So you can start by trying that. Uh, most of them won't answer you. But what you can do is maybe friend them on LinkedIn message them, they probably still won't answer you. But what I've been able to do, and it's such a simple idea, but I went to a smaller market. Knoxville, Tennessee is where I'm from. They didn't know me from Adam. But you show up, you ask to talk to the producer of the show, and you bring in some cupcakes. You bring in some donuts. You bring in some love. You bring your book in. You bring a t-shirt in. You bring anything in. And guess what? Those people will get to know you. So when I launch my book, um, when you guys launch your TED Talks, I want you to do the same thing. Build a relationship with these TV people. So I've built a relationship with these TV people. And so now I come in, they interview me. They're going to get something. They're going to get a dessert. I'm going to bring something. I'm going to bring cookies. I'm going to bring pies. And they remember that, believe it or not. Not many people do that. And that sets yourself apart. And really, when you're on TV, um, you do a good job the first time. They don't mind having you back, um, especially, you know, if you, if you got something to offer. Um, consider doing something free in the community. Um, give away your services. Um, I did that a lot when I was starting. I still do because it's a passion of mine, but that gets your name out. So if you're willing to go to the YMCA and spend a Saturday, like I went to, I have the Covenant House in Atlanta, Georgia, that I do a lot of speaking for as far as job interview. I give them free job interview sessions. You volunteer at a homeless runaway center. Not only is that great for your community, it builds your speaking criteria, but it also can can help you get some um, publicity on the, on the news. Okay, um, just because I'm having te technical issues here, just kind of give me a nod or something so I know I'm okay to go to the next question. Thank you, Zach. So um, make sure you guys, we're about to wrap this up. If you have any other questions, make sure to post those right now. Um, is it okay for people to use talks that they have done before that maybe wasn't filmed or didn't get a lot of views? It is completely okay to do that. You know, I'm glad you asked that question. So what you want to do is make sure that you don't give a talk that's already been given. Um, you, and when I say that given, I mean like you've heard somebody else give that talk. You don't want to copy anybody's talk, but if there's a theme, like for example, I've always talked about that 70% of Americans don't like their job. And that's a common theme. Every single talk I give, that is a common theme that I talk about and why they don't like their jobs and why they're doing them. That's all woven into my TED talk. Now I put some new content in there. The zombie thing was brand new and I put some different nuances to it, but you can actually use, and I recommend you because that's the stuff your experts on speaking on. I recommend you 
using that content and, and building a talk out from there. So if you've got great points and people really love that concept or that story you tell, what, weave it in that TED Talk and, and really make it the best you can. Wonderful. Thank you. So um, when and I don't I don't know if this happens all the time, but when people get called back for a TED um, TED Talk or TEDx and the organizer calls them for a phone interview, is there anything that they should prepare for that? part to, um, to kind of ensure that they are selected or that um, they're doing everything to set themselves up to make sure that they're a good candidate? Yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of times when you apply online, they'll ask for an outline. They'll ask for, you know, um, what your credentials are, everything like that. And then typically they'll email you and they'll set maybe up some time up to speak with you. What I would do is really prepare your outline. When you get that call, have your TED Talk in mind what you want to talk about. And then they'll probably set up an email for you to do a rehearsal. And so you'll actually rehearse the whole talk. And then they'll decide, you know, who goes forward. I think there's six or seven slots. But guys, there's so many TEDx's everywhere that go on all year long. There's plenty of opportunities to, to speak at these. Um, I think the opportunities have never been greater. So if you've got a great idea and a great concept, really be prepared um, before you even apply. Um, have, have your TED Talk practice, ready to go critiqued um, and be able to pitch your idea, uh, practice your pitch. You know, the whole, the whole message of tonight is practice the pitch. You know, you want to have a 90 second pitch, why your idea is so good. And so if you continue to practice that pitch and you can explain that in 90 seconds, why your TED talk's good, what the idea is and how it'll help people and why you're passionate about it and why you, you may make sense, then you can really make it on stage. And um, finally, thank you, first of all, for sharing all this information. You guys, let's give some hearts and some thumbs up, because I want to say this before this last question. This was more than just a TED Talk like view here. He has given us marketing information, how to find some um, talks and some speaking opportunities, how to just get us stuff out there. This has been Fabulous. This has been rich. So thank you so much. This has been amazing for all the resources and things that you have shared, how to even get more views and how to, to build our email list. I mean, this has been amazing, 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 amazing. So a million hearts, a million thumbs up to you, Zach. I see why you got all those accolades and all those um, different people calling you to speak. This was really, really great, guys. So make sure that you are sharing this to someone. And before we end, I'm actually going to um, put his information up, and leave it up just for a minute to make sure that you get that. I'm going to go back in the feed and make sure that um, I did share his link and um, um, put his TED talk to make sure you watch that. Get those views up, make some comments on it, like he suggested. But somebody may say, you know, you talked about talk, talk about something you're passionate about, something you know about. Um, and I'm sure they're going to look at different TED Talks. What if there is like a lot of TED Talks already on that? What would you um, suggest to them? Do they still do something on that? How do they make their title creative or, or what would you say? You know, that's a great question because that's one of the fears I had. Um, it, it's interesting you say that because, you know, so many people, if you type in purpose and passion or discover your passion or find your passion. There has been so many Ted talks on that. So, you know, I listened to a lot of them and I never, you know, I saw some themes that align with mine, but not really the whole zombie approach and what you needed to do to, to find your passion or your purpose. I would never um, talk anybody out of it uh, to do a Ted talk based on their expertise. As long as you bring a new, nuance to it and you bring your own new information and your known new ideas, you can give the same talks. Um, I think another popular category is business or leadership is huge. Leadership. There's so many TED Talks on leadership. Well, if you've got your own approach to leadership and you've got your own ideas and your own algorithms, go for it. Make another talk on leadership. There's never, we can always learn leadership. So I would never talk anybody out of 
uh, their expertise. Don't be intimidated by all the talks out there. If you can make your stand out, that's all that matters. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So um, I'm going to add Zach's information again. Zach, any closing words, any services? I know you said you have a book coming out. I know you offered for people to reach out to you. Anything that you would like to share with the people before um, you leave on this evening? Yeah. So the one thing I'd like to share with is, you know, I give talks all around the country and, you know, it's such a it's awesome to talk to future speakers and, you know, I offer this up and a lot of people don't take advantage of it, but I'm really serious. Um, I offer my contact. I really want you to follow me on social media, not just for another like, but I really want you to follow me during your journey because here's what happens. You as future speakers, there are people going to be out there that you're growing your business. We can partner together. And I can be your advocate. You can be my advocate. And guess what? We can build this whole platform. If we all stay a close, tight knit group, we can grow our businesses together. So let's say somebody on this line, um, they're really, their focal point is mental illness. And that's the big key. And that's the big topic. Maybe me and you could partner up in a bit, or I could share some details, or you might say, Hey, I've been on this podcast, Zach, you might want to try it. It's helped me. We're always bouncing ideas off to each other. Let's network. That's the key to growing a business is network. So go to my social media contacts, say hi, zapmallinger.com. You can find my LinkedIn, my Instagram, my Facebook, whatever you need on there. Click on that link. Follow me on that platform. Let's communicate. Let's grow our business together. Let's go out market and let's make speak and make the world better. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you again, Zach. Um, I'm seeing like just stuff coming in. This was great. Great information. Thank you. Awesome. Collaboration is the key. Zach, guess what? You brought it tonight. Yes. You know, with all our technical issues and concerns, I'm so happy that we were able to push through Zach. Really, he was he was me too. I'm just stressing up here like, I don't know, cutting the computer, just trying to do everything and, and trying to figure out the PowerPoint. I was just all over the place, but I'm grateful for that today. He came and he brought it and I am very, very grateful for you. So thank you, Zach, just giving it up to thank you. We, we really appreciate you. I'm going to leave, leave your contact information on here for a while. Let's just give it up for Zach as we say goodbye to him for this evening. So I hope you guys enjoyed the content that was brought to you today. I'm Lenise McGee from Lenise Leads. I am one of the admins of the Speaker Circle, along with Brandy Austin and Anita Clinton. And our goal is just to bring you information that is going to help your speaking career grow. So if you need more information or have suggestions, don't hesitate to um, let us know. We'll do our best just to make sure that we're constantly bringing you the information and let us know if anything that we're bringing you is helping you and helping your speaking career grow. That is our goal. And so we thank you for taking the time out. Be on the lookout for our next um, in, in the box. In, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted here. Be on the lookout for our next one that will be coming to you live right here from the speaker circle. And I hope that today um, you are preparing now for your TED talk. I hope that you feel confident that you have what it takes to share your story. Why? Because your voice needs to be heard. All right. Make sure you get that information. Make sure that you reach out to Zach. Until next time, be great.